Spoken language is the most important form of human communication. And William Lebove transformed the science of spoken language, linguistics, with mathematical methods like no one before him. He was able to dissect languages and dialects in ways that taught us how we speak, how that speech changes over time, and often the cultural reasons why. His fascination with language began as a child. One of the earliest films I saw as a kid was the black and white version of Pygmalion. There was a young woman who was saying, out, and get out, and he was writing it down. And I said, gee, how was he able to write down the sounds that a person was making? But he did not begin his career as a linguist. He studied English and philosophy at Harvard and took some science courses for fun. In 1959, after he graduated, those science courses got him a job as an industrial chemist. Ten years later, he decided to use his quantitative skills in a new way by switching careers. I heard about this field called linguistics, and it occurred to me that this would be a great field to enter and try to give it a solid or empirical base. Today we measure things not only with what we hear, but what we can see, translating sounds into numbers. He went to Columbia, graduating with a PhD in linguistics in 1964. He stayed on as faculty until he moved to the University of Pennsylvania in 1971, where he continues to do research. Lebove pioneered the field of sociolinguistics, looking for patterns in how the mind creates language, places it in social context and communities, and passes it along over time. He invented new techniques for fieldwork and mathematical analysis of voice recordings. He analyzed and classified waveforms associated with vowels and consonants used by people living in different places. If you can understand what a person is saying, our computers can pretty well understand what the numbers that correspond to that are. As instruments became faster and more accurate, he found something surprising. When we started recording people's speaking as close to their everyday speech as possible, we found that they don't always say the same thing. There's a great deal of variation. And that has become this, almost a field called the study of change and variation. People listen to speech for clues to social class, status, and cultural identity. For example, educators wanted to know why poor African-American children had a hard time learning to read. Did it have anything to do with their dialect? His work contributed to the modern understanding of how all languages and dialects develop and vary. Lebove proved that African-American vernacular English is its own language, just as systematic and richly expressive as any other language. Decade after decade, the residential segregation has increased, and that's responsible for the fact that this particular dialect is moving further and further away from other dialects. Lebove discovered... Language change is not the result of inattention, laziness, carelessness, stupidity. Language changes spontaneously in response to speech we encounter in the social fabric of our lives. Lebove used his linguistic insights to develop a culturally sensitive program that helped improve the reading skills of millions of students. His findings had a profound effect on education and attitudes. As he studied more and more shifts and local speech patterns, he realized that dialects can develop rapidly. He embarked on an ambitious project, the Atlas of North American English. He found... There were huge changes taking place that affected millions of people at the same time. So that what we originally thought of as local identity becomes more mysterious. American dialects are becoming more different from each other. People say impossible. We're all watching the same television programs. How can it be? This is against common sense. The one thing we found is that people are not influenced by passive interaction. People talk to other people who influence what they say and how they say it to each other. That personal interaction doesn't exist with a television set. Lebeau's thousands of recordings offer us a time machine to study how rapidly our most basic form of communication, our spoken word, evolves. The greatest thrill that we get in, in our work is to discover that through use of scientific methods you can reach out into the world and lay your hand on something that you feel that's real. 
that's really there. William LeBove was awarded the 2013 Benjamin Franklin Medal in Computer and Cognitive Science.